Hey everybody, Joe with Joe's Phenomenal here and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be going over the top six reasons that your pots and pans get warped. So without further ado, let's get into this. Today we're going to take one of my saute pans here and we're going to warp it on purpose. And the reason for that is we're going to show you just exactly how easy that is to do. And then we're going to go through and show you exactly how to avoid that happening and how to pick the right pans to minimize that from happening to you. I heated up the oven to about 375 degrees, cooked a couple of salmon patties in a perfectly straight pan. And when they were done, I took them out of the pan and then I doused the pan with ice cold water. Does that scenario look familiar to you? That is the absolute most common reason pans get warped. Heating up the pan in the oven or on one of your burners, taking the food out when it's hot, and throwing in some cold water because you want to clean the pan up. People are under the impression that if you buy really super high-end pots and pans, that they are virtually warp-proof. I'm here to tell you that's very far from the truth. In fact, if you look at the warranty information on really high-end pans like Allclad, they consider what we just did as misuse and a pan warping because of that will not be covered under your warranty. And the same goes for just about every mid to high end manufacturer that there is. So what I'm here to show you today is how to avoid that problem with the top six reasons that pans get warped. Whoa! Reason number one, hot pans in cold water. That's exactly what I just showed you in my example here. And as you can see, it warped that pan pretty badly on the bottom. And it also happens to be the number one thing that causes pans to get warped. Contrary to popular belief, the number one reason isn't cheap pans. It's doing what we just did. The reason that happens is due to a thing called thermal shock. When you heat your pans up, the metal in them actually slightly expands, and when it cools down, it contracts. If you take your pan and throw a bunch of cold water onto it, it's gonna contract much faster in the area that the cold water touches than the areas that it doesn't initially touch. So therefore, I poured that water in right into the center, and it's gonna contract the metal right in the center of that pan really quickly while the sides of the pan are still hot and they will contract slower. That means it's actually gonna pull it out of shape. And when that stress is greater than the strength of the metal, then you have problems. You can end up with warping, deformation, and in some cases it'll even crack. Reason number two is overheating. And there's a few things that come under this category. If you set one of your burners to high and put your pan down and let that thing get heated way up, and then you take a piece of cold meat or cold liquid and put that in the pan, the difference in temperature can cause a warp of the pan in that area as well. The good thing about good pans is that you don't ever really have to have the thing on really high heat. Medium heat to medium high is usually plenty hot enough for anything you need to do, just because better pans tend to have much better heat disbursement and they maintain the heat that you put on them for a lot longer, so it's not required to have a whole bunch of fire going on underneath them. Even cold air can warp a pan. If you're in a colder environment and you have a pan that you've really overheated and you let it set out on the stove to cool down, even the cold ambient air around it can be enough to cause a little bit of a warp on that too. In addition to heating your pans up too fast, putting them into a really hot oven can have the same type of effect too. If you have your oven set to anything over 450 degrees, a lot of times that can cause most pans to warp a little bit as well. And also for cooking on the burners, it's not recommended that you use really high heat for anything unless you're boiling water or something like that. Reason number three would be mismatching the burner size to the pan size. If you have a large burner and you put a small pan on it, or you put a large pan on a small burner, it has the same effect. A uh, large pan on a small burner means the fire is going to be concentrated more in the middle of the pan and it won't be able to heat the outer edges of the pan. So therefore, the center part is going to get really hot. Hot, that's hot. The outer parts are going to be cool and it's going to warp the center. Same goes with using a small pan on a large burner. In that case, you're going to end up heating up the outer edges of the pan much faster than the center. Hey, by the way, if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks, and all sorts of other kitchen-related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. Reason number four would be pans that are too thin. Thin pans are typically the ones you find in discount stores or ones that just don't cost very much money. And the dead giveaway on most of those is the fact that they're so light. If you've used really good expensive pans, you'll know that they are pretty heavy. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Still doesn't 
don't know how you do it. A lot of times you go into the store and they have some inexpensive ones on display and the thing feels a third of the weight. Well, that's because it has about a third of the metal. In this case, you just have a lot less material to absorb all the expansion and contraction. Also, they'll probably be pretty poor conductors of heat, so therefore you're going to get pretty uneven heating and you'll have hot and cold spots all over the place. Because of that, they tend to lose heat very quickly, so therefore you've got to end up running a little bit higher temperature to keep them hot. That thin metal is going to be much weaker, so therefore much more susceptible to warps and cracks. As a rule of thumb, any decent pan should be at least about two and a half millimeters thick. A lot of times that's not documented on the packaging or anything, but you can go back to what I was saying before and just use a weight test. If it's a really light pan, it's not gonna be good. Heavier pans, more material, so it's not gonna be a thin pan. A great example of what I'm talking about is if you're ever taking a baking sheet to make cookies or something like that, and you get these really cheap baking sheets from Smith's Food King or Albertsons or something, and you put the cookies on there and you put that in your oven, and then the thing gets kind of weird and tweaked, you got one end popping up and it's not sitting flat. That's the exact thing we're talking about. Thin material, too much heat, immediate warp. Reason number five would be using aluminum and copper pans in general. Aluminum and copper are much softer metals. So being softer metals, they expand and contract much easier. They're actually good conductors of heat though, so they're gonna heat up very, very quickly. So you're gonna have a lot of temperature variation there. If you're using non-stick pans, most of those are made out of aluminum. There are some that are made of stainless steel, but if you get aluminum ones, make sure you get hard anodized aluminum ones. Copper and aluminum are fine, but you just have to be extra, extra careful with those. Our sixth reason has to do with the difference between single ply and multi-ply construction. Now, multi-ply doesn't necessarily mean multiple layers of metal, which is how most people define that. Multi-ply means there's multiple types of metal. For instance, a multi-ply pan probably has a little bit of aluminum and copper in the middle, and then it's surrounded by stainless steel layers on the top and bottom. A single-ply pan only has one type of metal. So if you're talking about a stainless steel pan that has three layers of stainless steel on it, well, that is a single-ply pan. Now, with a multi-ply pan, you have the advantage of having copper and or aluminum in the middle with the stainless steel on the outside, so you've got the aluminum and copper in there spreading the heat out very evenly, and then you have the strength of the stainless steel around it to help prevent it from being warped. So you'll be able to heat your pans up pretty quickly, but you won't have to worry about them cooling down too fast. Therefore, you can cook much more evenly and predictably. Single ply pans come in both aluminum and stainless steel. As far as the aluminum ones go, we've already kind of gone through that. They don't have the hard exterior, so they're a little bit more easily warped. The heat disbursement isn't quite as good because although they'll heat up very quickly because aluminum is a pretty good conductor of heat, they won't maintain that heat quite as well. And that material is much more susceptible to thermal shock. So as it heats and cools, you're gonna have expansion and contraction of the metal and you always run the risk of that causing a little bit of a bend or a warp in your pan. As far as single ply stainless steel pans go, they're more resistant to warping than an aluminum pan would be, but not quite as much as a multi-ply stainless steel pan. Since the whole thing is stainless steel, it's not gonna be a great conductor of heat, so therefore you're gonna have uneven heating on those. And since those pans don't have the advantage of having copper or aluminum in the middle, they don't disperse heat amongst the surface of the pan quite as well either. Therefore, a lot of the heat tends to stay concentrated in the center, and that again can cause some warping. Now all this stuff sounds pretty overwhelming and it sounds like, oh my God, I'm gonna buy pans and they're all gonna warp and this is gonna suck because Joe just gave me all these reasons why my pans can warp and they just sound like they're all garbage and they're gonna be ruined in a year. Well, as long as you just follow a couple of tips, your pans can really last a lifetime and there's not really much you have to remember. In fact, if you get decent quality pans and take really good care of them, they will last you a lifetime. And once you know what you should and shouldn't do with them, taking care of them really isn't that hard at all. I would just recommend you do a few things. Once again, get decent pans, get multi-ply pans. When you're done cooking on your pots and pans, don't put them in the sink, let them sit on your cooktop until they get nice and cool, and then go ahead and clean them up. Number four, don't heat them up too quickly. And number five, don't overheat them. Try to avoid using really high heat with them unless you really need to, unless you're doing a power boil or something like that. Medium high is plenty on those. Also, if you wanna put your saute pan down in your oven and you're gonna go more than 400 degrees, 
I would go ahead and probably use a cast iron pan for that. If you follow those steps, you should be in fantastic shape. If you've managed to warp pans in ways that I haven't mentioned here, or you have any care tips that I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear about it down in the comment section down below. And if you'd like a decent recommendation for some pretty good stainless steel pans, I've got a video linked above and you can check those out. There's also an Amazon affiliates link down in the description area of the video for those said pans. If you'd like to know a little bit more about us, you can watch a couple more videos or you can visit us online at joesphenomenal.com. We appreciate you watching the video to the end and hope to see you again really soon. Hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.